But first, the U.S. Census is generally considered more technical than controversial. But in recent months, the once-a-decade population count has been the subject of political debate. There's been no move to replace the director, John Thompson, since his surprise resignation last spring. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross recently asked Congress for additional funding to keep the agency from collapsing. Ari Srinivasan spoke with former Census Director Kenneth Pruitt to discuss what a crippled census in 2020 could mean for our democracy. But he began with a quick look at how the census affects us all. Here's a bit of Civics 101. The U.S. Census is an attempt by the U.S. government to count every person living in the United States. Every 10 years, the Census Bureau gathers information like gender, age, race, and income. We did it! Hey! What did you do? We helped Mommy fill out our census form. And we mailed it back. But why? Because everybody counts in the census form. But why does the government collect this data? First, the Constitution says to. One of the ways our Constitution preserves our rights is to require the government to conduct a census every 10 years. The Founding Fathers decided the number of seats in the U.S. House is determined by the number of people in each state. The official count is used to draw voting districts at the national, state, and local levels. But there's another important reason the U.S. conducts a census, money. Two million four, two million five. The U.S. Census isn't just a population count. It helps allocate federal, state, and local funds to your community. The federal government decides how much funding or grants to give states, counties, and cities by looking at the detailed census data. That means money for updating schools, building new hospitals, repairing broken roads, and maintaining public utilities like water, sewage, and electricity. You can answer Census 2000 and get what you need. Or you can leave it blank and get this. Nothing. Private companies also make major decisions based on what the census says, like where to build grocery stores or new housing developments. But like any other government agency, the Census Bureau needs funding to do its job. And it's not cheap. The last census in 2010 cost taxpayers $13 billion, with more than 500 field offices and 635,000 staffers nationwide. Republicans already worried about big government have questioned that price tag. South Carolina Congressman Trey Gowdy. Cost matters. Uh, it, it, it matters, period. New paragraph. Kenneth Rowe, thanks for joining us. It's been a significant concern of uh, budget hawks saying, why does the census cost as much as it does? Aren't there technologies now that can do it better and less expensively? Uh, they're trying to do the 2020 census at roughly half of the price of the 2010 census, whereas the 2010 was double the price of the 2000. That was the one I was engaged in. So yeah, enormous advances have been made in using technology to reduce the cost. But if you're not even funded at that level with these new technologies, while well, you're simply ill-prepared to do this census in 2020. The bad news is it's not being funded, and uh, we currently don't have a leader. We don't have a director in the Census Bureau, so we're not ready in that more important sense. And then another issue, we're trying new technologies this year for the first time ever in a census, and you have to test them, or you should test them. They're not, there's no money to, be, to test them. It's, it's, it's like you had a fighter pli a plane that put some new technology in it. It's never been before. It rolls off the assembly line. And they say, oh, go directly into action. Now, there was a draft executive order that was leaked uh, early this year that recommended that the U.S. Census, quote, include questions that determine U.S. citizenship and immigration status. Now, there's no indication that that would be included in the 2020 census, but what kind of an effect does that have? It would scare a lot of people that you actually need to count. Uh, the census is supposed to count everyone in the country once and only once and in the right place. That's a big job. You know, considering that we're in a climate where institutions that we once used to trust are regularly questioned, whether it's fake news or fake census, I mean, what's, the, what's the consequence of something like this not being trusted? Uh, huge, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, if we really have a bad census, one of the things that could happen is the administration could say, let's not use it. Let's sort of just use the old numbers. And with respect to um, redistricting, um, uh, allocation of seats in the U.S. Congress, uh, that means we would go with what we now have. A lot of population movement in the last 10 years. 
So this would really be a setback. You know, it, was, it seems constitutionally it was designed as a, a representative tool, not a political one, but over the years it's been used by either side that's in control as kind of a political tool. I would say the Census Bureau is not political. The use of the numbers is political. And as long as we can have the Census Bureau only wanting to produce the most accurate, complete count, then it itself is not political. If they are misused or used in ways that we, they're gerrymandering now with those census data. So a population, which is roughly 50-50 in terms of electoral strength, is roughly 60-40 in terms of seats in, in, in the Congress and governorships. Now, are there vested interests in wanting to maintain the status quo? Well, yes, and I'm trying not to be political here. But if you like the distribution of seats in, and the distribution of governorships in, in particular um, in the country now, and you think that by having a good census, uh, you may lose some of those seats, then why would you want to have a good census? Can yeah. this census um, be salvaged or saved given the amount of time and the amount of money that we have right now? Oh, yes. If, 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 if there were strong leadership in place within the next five months, let us say, four or five months, and if the budget were where it ought to be, yes, it can be saved. Uh, you, there comes a time when you can't save it. Uh, you, if, if you have not tested the census in 2018, it's too late to fix it, even if you tested it in 2019. You don't have the time to go back and, 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 and fix any of the problems that you encountered in the big test. Kenneth Pruitt, uh, now of Columbia University, former director of the U.S. Census. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks.